Backstage with our UFC light heavyweight champion, Daniel Cormier. Daniel, you seem unimpressed by that performance with John Jones tonight, but very impressed by Ovin St. Pru. Talk to me about kind of the balance there. Both of them. As I said, you know, I, I didn't think we saw the best Jones, but he won 50-44 on a scorecard. Yeah. So even at his, when he's not as, at his best, he can dominate one of the top 10 fighters in the world. So I'm not trying to <laughs> on his performance. You know, he, he just wasn't the guy that I fought last January. He wasn't the guy that, that, that beat all these other people. And I don't know what it could have been. Could have been ring rusty. But again, you're asking me these questions right after I watch him fight in a way that I feel would have been beneficial to me. You know, so there's a lot of, uh, of, of inner thought going on as to what type of opportunity did we just leave on the table, you right. know? But in a, in a different way of looking at it, what kind of opportunity could you have in the future if you are to land on a big card like yeah. UFC 200 or something, where now you've got an even larger platform and larger audience, right? It, it's great, you know, so uh, when you think about it again, it's like, uh, as a competitor, I want to fight the best, and I want him to be at his best, so if he needed this fight to get back in the form, then that's good, you know. Were you expecting this fight when you found out Ovin St. Pru was stepping in three weeks' notice, you know, three weeks to prepare for cardio, for weight cut, and to face one of the pound-for-pound -pound best ever? Were you expecting it to go five rounds? I didn't because I thought that John could have implemented wrestling a little bit earlier, and as you saw, when he did wrestle, he dominated. I thought he would wrestle a little bit earlier in the fight, and dominate events in that way, but he didn't. So uh, I will see. You know, I I was surprised. So I think a lot of it was due to uh, John not wrestling early, and also uh, uh, Ovince doing a fantastic job. Yeah. Now we know you go to the doctor Monday. We know that you're waiting to find out what they say in terms of when you can return to training. Um, is this the most difficult part of everything, sitting and waiting for someone else to tell you when you can go? Yeah. You know, this whole night has been difficult. You know, I was. Here doing commentary and, and, you know, it's a dream of mine to do that type of job at some point in my life. But um, the idea that I was supposed to be in the octagon competing uh, made it much more difficult. So uh, mixed emotions, to say the least, but it is what it is now, you know. I just got to get back healthy and, and get back to doing what I do, and that's fight. Saw your boy Luke Rockhold just a minute ago. I'm sure he's going to try and lift your spirits after this. Yeah, you know, he will. You know, and, and again, you know, I've got a beautiful life, beautiful family, and uh, opportunities come, opportunities go, but they always represent themselves to people who do the right thing. Absolutely. Daniel, thank you for taking the time to talk to us, but I've got to congratulate you on an incredible job tonight. That's not an easy task that you had calling those fights, and especially with the duo that's been together for so long, you did an incredible job. Thank you for that as well. Thank you, Megan. Appreciate I appreciate it. it.